everybody's gonna make it through okay well hello and welcome to this live um for everybody that's watching this on youtube later i'm doing a TikTok live and so the people i'm talking to is in the comments here <laughs> um and we're gonna do some cleansing and clearing before we get started here we are going to be talking about shifting your reality how to do that timeline shifting uh we're going to talk about um paradigm shifts this is some incense here to help everybody release anything that is no longer serving you so maybe it's mental thoughts maybe it's health related things maybe you got an argument earlier <laughs> and you want to let go of that um it's mercury retrograde right now um and it's scorpio season <laughs> and so there's a lot of people experiencing some um very heavy emotions <laughs> so if you want to let go of those as well and then this is florida water florida water is a good cleanser and clearer and protector so if you want to accept that you can say yes <laughs> in your mind out louder in the chat okay so we're going to be talking about first the dark night of the soul what that is what it looks like how to traverse that easier and how to make big shifts in your life um, that's something that i have done several times <laughs> in my life um so i'll be speaking from my own personal experiences as examples i find that's really beneficial for people um when when it's relatable <laughs> and so here we go so i have all these notes here let me get these okay so what is the dark night of the soul uh that's a term that is going around a lot in spirituality or has been but um it's a very common one so the dark night of the soul um also if anybody has questions or comments as we go along here i'll i'll answer them to the best of my capacity uh so dark night of the soul is when everything in your life is going okay like not necessarily maybe the best not the most optimal but it's like all right and then all of a sudden it's not like all of a sudden like your job's not working out you don't want to be there anymore maybe the relationship you're in you're like oh like i'm seeing all these things that i wasn't seeing before or like maybe you're just not putting up with it like you used to in the past or you know you're just not vibing with that person anymore maybe that's your friends um when people start to not speak on the same wavelength as you it's like you're on a whole different planet <laughs> from other people right um a lot of that's like moving into like 5d and things of that nature uh but things that you used to resonate with like hobbies or like interests are no longer bringing you joy um just think things in your life you're looking around and like mm, this ain't it like and sometimes it's really major sometimes sometimes it's like huge like i don't like anything in my life like you just wake up one day and you're like what have i been doing <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'm gonna talk about my dark my first dark night of the soul and then we'll talk about some more <laughs> so i grew up in a uh, very religious household like the person that raised me was a preacher <laughs> like we were real deep in it and that's nothing against spirituality i mean religious right like there's things i still love about the church we love jesus okay so take what you want from this but it was very like constructual and like the way that like females were treated specifically too was like very oppressive and like just the religious that i was in was very very oppressive okay i was also homeschooled until ninth grade and so i was not like around a lot of other people i went to high school when i was in ninth grade in high school and that was like a huge transitional shift like huge huge transitional shift uh but we'll talk about that more later um and so i i basically was like growing up inside this like very tiny little box okay like i didn't go a lot of places like i didn't do hardly anything when i was a kid i grew up on a tree farm i was very isolated from people other beings right i was homeschooled but my mom made sure to have us around other kids yeah this is not to dog on homeschooling like i think that's a beautiful thing there's a lot of things that are like yucky with the school system um there's a better ways to do it like getting your kids around <laughs> other people and kids um i was part of like homeschool groups a little bit but they were still like in the church and so it's still kind of that like constructural box <laughs> so anyway um when i was 20 how old was i 
2015. Okay, we'll just say 2015. I was 20 something. Um, I went to a EDM music festival. It was this huge, huge music festival, like acres and acres and acres. And like when I got there, it was the first time I had ever been around anything like that. Like, I don't know if anybody else has been into a, a giant music festival before, but it's like a whole new world. <laughs> okay. And my eyes were literally like open to a whole new reality. I was like, oh, all these things that I was told that were evil or people or like whatever, right? Like just simply wasn't true. But like, that's all that had been fed into my subconscious and into my reality. And then I go somewhere and I'm like, this is dope. <laughs> like this is amazing like I love this right so that's when I started oh my earphones so yes the world is evil yes that is what I heard constantly when I was a child ah uh, so that's when my my eyes were first opened up this isn't like when I woke up woke up if that makes sense I had just perceived a different reality and I was like whoa life is not what I thought it was okay so fast forward two years later, here we go, the dark night of the soul. <laughs> so that was super, super intense. So I'll give you a little, a little background story of where I was at. So I owned a business. I owned a doggy daycare. It was great. I loved it. Super successful. We love dogs. Okay. I was in school full time. I was taking care of my grandmother who lived with me. Like my grandfather had passed and so I was her full-time caretaker. Single mom, a lot going on. <laughs> like I had so much on my plate. If you were an outsider looking in at my life, you would be like, wow, she has it all together. Like look at her life, great. Inside, I was crumbling away. One, because I had like so much stress and like I was also in a relationship that was like falling out of resonance. Like, we loved each other a lot, but then like things started to get wonky and like it wasn't working out great anymore, but I was like telling myself it was fine. Everything, I was telling everything in my life, it was fine. I was seeing a therapist at that time and the therapist was like, you have to stop. Like you have too much on your plate. You're gonna have a breakdown. And I was like, it's fine. Like, what do you want me to take off my plate? Like taking care of my grandma, taking care of my son. <laughs> Like, taking care of my business like what do you want me to do here right okay so I go on vacation with the person I was in a relationship with and I have a breakdown I'm in the bathroom and I'm on the floor and I'm crying my eyes out and I'm like I hate my life I hate everything about it not my son obviously <laughs> but like everything else I was like I can't stand any of this I don't know why I'm so depressed I don't know why I'm so anxious but where I'm at right now like I don't care what you have to do, universe. I want a completely different life. I do not want any part of this. And boy, was I in for a fun ride. <laughs> okay, so when you ask the universe these things, <laughs> make sure you say with ease and grace. Okay, I'm the type of person who likes to make huge shifts all at one moment. Like, I've left multiple jobs, like, all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm just like, I'm done. But that creates sometimes like rockiness. But I'm like, I'm going to do it full force here. <laughs> I think the universe will eventually force us to move if we resist the overall plan. Yes. The universe and my spirit guides and my higher self, this is before I was into any of this stuff, were constantly trying to tell me that I needed to make shifts in my life. But I was like, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Like, we're just going to keep rocking and moving like we have been, even though I was miserable, right? But I was, like, fooling myself, saying, like, everything's fine. Okay, so I was like, I'm done with this life. I want something different. I get back home, me and the relationship we break up, I sold my half of the business. Like, all of a sudden, was like, I'm done. I didn't have any plan. <laughs> I was just like, I'm going to take it, and then I'm just going to go. I decided I wasn't going to go to school anymore. I went to school for psychology and I was going to become a clinical psychologist. And I was like, we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> okay. And let's see what else. Uh, I lost all my friends. My family uh, 
started getting real like wonky <laughs> like was not resonating and like gotten a tons of like arguments and like just completely broke away from everything <laughs> yeah a major shifts just up and left yep yep <laughs> um Everybody's saying, poor guy. Um, I don't know if you're referring to the relationship that I was in, but it was more of a mutual thing. <laughs> like, it wasn't working out on their end either. <laughs> so, this is where the tower moment comes in. So, tower moments are when you have your little dark night of the soul, or not little, this is big, and you're like, I don't like this. I don't want to be here anymore. And so, the universe comes in and it's like, okay. <laughs> Like, we'll take all that stuff, and I want to preface this with saying, like, your dark side of the soul, if you've been through one, or if you're currently going through one, is not going to be the same as mine. I'm using mine as an example. That was, like, a big one for me. I've been through multiple dark nights of the soul, and they're not all like that. Like, some of them are a lot lighter. <laughs> like, I just came out of one, and we'll talk about that a little bit, but they, they don't have to be that dramatic. Okay, so with the tower moment, that's the universe saying, okay, well, we're going to take everything or things that are not in alignment with you anymore so that we can bring the new stuff in. That's when things get really scary because it's like, why are my friends not resonating with me? Why is my relationship? Why do I not want to be at my job anymore? Why do these interests and hobbies not, you know, why, why are they not bringing me joy? What's happening is a good thing. Like, it seems very negative, like, when you're in it, <laughs> because you're like, universe, why are you taking all this stuff away from me? It's taking old energy and moving it out so that your manifestations can come in. And sometimes, like, you know you want a different life, right? But you don't know what that different life looks like yet. And so you're like, well, I haven't even figured out what I want. But the universe is like, we're going to go ahead and start <laughs> now, right? Okay. So that's where the void comes in. So this is, you had your tower moment. Now everything's gone. <laughs> and now you're over here waiting on your manifestations, but they haven't come in yet. So you're in the void space. So the void space is where like manifestation, it's, it's working. Okay. But the void is also where you go in hermit mode sometimes. So hermit mode is when like you stop hanging out with people as much you're recalibrating like you have to spend time with yourself and figure out what you do want and sometimes the universe will like get you to hermit away from people and things so that you can find what you really want because a lot of us sometimes mask or we do things that people say that we should be doing instead of things that we want to do and so the universe will oh, block you from things that are distracting you. Like there's so many distractions in the world that we don't even know what our soul really wants. Cause it's like instant gratification all over the place. And we're like hanging out with friends. So we don't really have to think about, you know, where our life's at or what state we're in. But like, if you shove all that away and shove it down, like I did and just say like, it's fine. Like it just eats away at you. And you're not happy because you're not doing the things you're, that do make you happy. You're doing other things that people say, oh, you should do this or you should do that, right? You have to be with yourself <laughs> and spend time with yourself and recalibrate and figure it out. Like, what is my higher self? What am I trying to work towards, right? But it's scary when you're in the hermit mode and you're like, I don't know who I am. What am I supposed to work towards, so we're going to talk about how to traverse that a little bit easier <laughs> now that I've been through like several of them. I sit with myself and confuse myself. Uh, that happens sometimes. <laughs> um, I had a, when I went through my void space in my hermit mode the first time, I was literally by myself for a year. Like I had no friends and like my family, like we had this huge like blow up argument situation. And so like I literally was by myself for a year. Like the only person I was hanging out with was my son. And like, that's about it. <laughs> um, and I, I had to face my greatest fear in life and that was being alone. Like that was my ultimate greatest fear was being abandoned and being alone. 
And so the universe literally put me in that situation so I could face my fear and learn to love with love myself and be with myself. And now I love being by myself, not by myself, but I love being with myself. Like I love being in my own energy. I love doing things with myself in the relationship that I've built. The way that I talk to myself is so vastly different than how I used to in the past. Like I used to be so negative and berate myself and just talk shit to myself constantly, right? And I was taking dig after dig after dig on my self-confidence and self-esteem. And it was me like (laughs) doing it to self, right? I currently do not like being with myself. That's why I stay on TikTok all day if I can't be with people. It's, it, and like, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, it's tough. Like, when, when you have ruminating thoughts and you go down negative holes and you're, like, constantly, like, breathing self, like, who wants to be with that, right? And it's you doing it to yourself. But the only way to get through that is to face it. <laughs> Like you literally have to learn to fall in love with yourself. And that's why the universe sometimes like snatches you out of that reality that you're in and pulls you away from everybody because it's like, well, you're going to do it. (laughs) Right. And that's what happened to me. Like, it was like, okay, you want a different life? Then you have to do this. You know, you don't have a choice. And it wasn't like the universe doing it. It was me. Like (laughs) it was my higher self, me putting myself in that situation so that I could learn and grow and evolve and like now looking back at it I'm like thank thank goodness (laughs) that I went through that because now I'm living a completely different life like completely completely different life than I was 10 years ago right I'm happy like I'm so happy with my life I love everything about it do I have challenges in life yes Do I have things that I'm working towards, you know, like dreams, desires, goals? Yes. But like overall, I'm so happy. Like I love the people in my life. I love my relationship with my son, even my son's father. Like we're not even together anymore. We had like this wildly (laughs) like toxic relationship. We have, we are the best co-parents now. Like everything in my life has completely changed, but it's because I faced that fear and went through that dark night of the soul and tower moment and let the universe like recalibrate everything in my life. That's how we're here. (laughs) Okay. So we'll talk about the length of your dark night of the soul and tower moment and hermit mode. So that one for me was a year and a half. (laughs) I have been through some that are like a week and some that are like months. Like I went through my last one. It was like six months came up out of that and then I was in another one for like three or four weeks and then I was up out of that so like this happens and it it gets easier over time because you start to get used to it and not used to it but you start to like understand like why it's happening and that it's for your benefit and that you are the one doing it I'm at a point now where I think something will change but I'm not surely sure what yet kind of comfy yeah so i mean like if we knew what was going to happen the whole time like that'd be super boring <laughs> right like like people say like i don't like surprises yes you do we we like surprises because otherwise life would just be boring if you knew everything uh so now i'm questioning everything in my life well we're going to talk about how to traverse these <laughs> a little bit easier here um so my nuts in here length it can be it can be any amount of time it does not have to be a six-year process it can be a day some people you know do some mega timeline shifting in like one perspective change and then all the thing all of a sudden things are different right okay so accepting the tower moment that has been a huge one for me like when i feel like I'm starting to go into the tower moment and things are starting to not resonate anymore. And I'm like, Ooh, I don't <laughs> like things are starting to look wonky again. Um, why is everything not working out when it just was? I'm like, okay, I'm going in a tower moment and it's going to be great. It's going to be great because when I come out on the other side of this, it's, it's going to be a completely new reality. 
And I'm not saying like every single thing in my life is going to be different. But when, when you say I'm going in a tower moment and that means that I'm evolving and I'm going up in consciousness level and I'm aligning with my desired life, like even more, it makes it so much more easy, like so much more easy. It makes it so much quicker because now you're looking through the lenses of this means my life is getting better. And when you're looking through the lenses of this means my life is getting better, your subconscious and your, like the subconscious looks for things to affirm that, right? Like, let's say I'm going through one and like, I have a relationship with a friend that's like, not the same as it was. I'm not going to grip onto that real tight because it means that something like else is coming in that's in more resonance and more in alignment with me. The harder you grip into that old reality that's not really working for you, or maybe you think it is, and you're not like looking at like, oh, maybe there's a better one over there. Like the longer and the more intense it is. (laughs) And I learned that lesson recently. We're going to talk about the one I just came out of. (laughs) Um, And I mean, it's, let me read these comments. I feel this energy shift that's different than any other I had before. It's strong energy. I have no clue what to do with it. It's very draining. Um, Part of that is the eclipse that we're going through. And a lot of new energy is hitting the planet. And we're this is part of like the one that I'm going through right now. There are so many people that are accelerating their frequency and vibration like really fast, like very quickly and consciousness levels like very fast that sometimes like our physical body has to catch up like with that amount of light that you can hold. Like you, you, you're going real quick and your body is dense (laughs) and your body has to physically catch up in your chakra system. And so like you might feel really tired or energetically drained or like muggy, right? It's because your, your whole DNA system is like restructuring and like, it takes time. Like it takes time for your body. Like I, that's the one I just came out of. Like I felt like (laughs) boo-boo. for like weeks and when I came out of it I'm like oh now I see because I received all these like new downloads and new frequencies and abilities but my body like it it took time to acclimate (laughs) okay so we're gonna talk about okay this is a big one so when you are letting go of an old reality to step into a new one it will literally feel like you're dying sometimes like, I'm just going to be very honest, like it literally, cause, cause it is your old reality is literally pulling away from you and your ego and your past versions are gripping as hard as they can. Like if you feel like, um, or I'm sorry, if you, if there's a animal in the wilds and it's dying, okay, it's going to do everything in its power to like hold on and survive the situation. That's your ego and like your past versions. And we're going to talk about how to deal through that a little bit. But your ego is not a bad thing. Like everybody kind of bashes on your ego. (laughs) Your ego is trying to keep you safe. It's like, hey, we're living in this comfortable reality where we know how everything works. And you're trying to shift us over into something that we have no idea what it looks like. Like even if it's way better on the other side, like you're, you're, brain and your physiology is like we don't know what the what that circumstance is going to look like so let's stay here (laughs) okay so oh one second okay let me drink some water before i keep going here so it can literally feel like my reality is crumbling underneath me like your beliefs, your values, everything. You're like, who am I? <laughs> what is life? <laughs> right? You're you're in the void and you have new, new energy, new ideas, new concepts coming in, but they haven't solidified yet. And so like for me, I'll just shift on over. So my first reality that I was living in was like homeschool, like thinking the world is evil. 
Okay, growing up in that real religious like construct. And then I'm shifting over here to where like, oh, none of that stuff was true, right? <laughs> that was good that I was shifting towards that, but it was still like my reality fell out from underneath me. And that was very scary because everything I knew was not true and everything that everybody had told me. So it's like, what the heck? Like, what is even true? <laughs> right? Like, what is, what is life? Okay. Then I shift over again. And I'm going to school to be a psychologist. And like my number one goal in life was to be a clinical psychologist and have an, a business owner, right? I was on that track. And then all of a sudden it's not. And that was super scary because I'm like, well, who am I? What am I supposed to be doing? Like that was the plan. And now I'm lost. <laughs> like I'm on a boat and I'm just lost to sea. Like what the heck, right? And so then I shift over again and now I'm doing energy healing, and this is where I'm at now. So I have been doing energy healing work, and I have been doing, sh and I'm a shadow work healer. Like, I help people dig up their trauma and their shadow work, shadow selves, and help transmute that, right? Like, I, I do a lot of, like, psychology work with people, even though it's energy work. And so that reality has now shifted again and I'm not going to be doing that type of work anymore like to some capacity but now I'm doing like light codes and light language and stepping more into into Reiki healing and that type of light healing opposed to the shadow work healing and let me tell you for the last couple of weeks it has been just not a fun ride because I'm like let me put my hair here because I said, you know what? Like, I just got solidified on this reality and I'm really good at this. And like, I know how to help people through their stuff. Like, I, I got such a good handle on this, right? And now my spirit guides and my higher self were like, oh, we're going to go do something else. Like, you have to let go of that. And I was gripping so tightly onto that and saying like, no. I am going to continue to do this. And then everything started to like break down. Like <laughs> everything was not working. Like social media, my like business back end stuff, like conversations with people, communication with people. And my spirit guides and higher self were like, you got to let go. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. And they're like, okay. <laughs> right. And so there was one day I woke up and I was just like, okay, I'm just going to surrender and let go. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen next, but we're just going to go along for the ride. Uh, my spirit, my spirit guys have ADHD too. <laughs> so I feel you on that. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, and so I, I had to surrender and let go and just say, I'm just here for the ride. And when I did that and I started to just do things that made me happy and started to take care of myself again and say, I, I'm going to just let everything come to me as it may. I'm going to go towards the things that make me happy. I started listening to like tons of light language and like I was recalibrating my system. But they're like, you have to chill out for a couple of weeks and it's going to seem like you're not making forward movement and like things are crumbling out from me from underneath you and it felt that way it literally felt like I was dying because I'm like y'all I'm I was so angry at them in the universe because I'm like you're doing it to me again <laughs> like, this happens but you know like even though I've been through it several times I still get caught up and say like why are you taking all this stuff from me they're not taking anything from me. We're leveling up to a new consciousness level. We're leveling up to a new frequency. If you are going through a dark night of the soul right now in this hermit mode, this void space, it's because you are evolving and you are growing and you're holding more light in your frequency and your reality is going to be so much better on the other side. But when we're in it, our ego is like, <laughs> like your life's crumbling, like everything's leaving, like everything's going to be horrible, right? That's not what's happening. You got to switch the frequency over to like higher self <laughs> and say like, we're good. We're good. This is good, <laughs> right? 
Okay, so these are the ways that we can traverse this easier. <laughs> um, how do you deal with that feeling? It, practice <laughs> going through it a couple times, and I'm going to give some tips. Okay, so micro shifting. That has been like so beneficial for me. I have a video on my YouTube channel, and there's a link in my bio to get to it, or my YouTube channel. Um, it's called The Wheel of Life. It's a psychology tool. It's been very beneficial for me and clients. When you are looking at your life, right, and you're like, I need to overhaul everything. Maybe you're not even at that point, but, like, you're just like, I need to overhaul, like, all these different things. It's very overwhelming. You're like, how am I supposed to do that? There's too many, too many moving parts. That's too much. <laughs> okay. What you have to do is break areas in your life down, like, in different sections, that's what I talked about in the, in the video, like career, finances, friends, relationships, you know, like all these different things. And then you micro break them down. Like literally, what can I do today to move me forward an inch in this area? And I know that sounds like it's going to take a long time and people are like, like, that's not going to make enough forward movement. Yes, it will. Micro shifting, like is very underrated <laughs> because you are what it seems like making tiny shifts you're making big shifts because you're bringing new energy in and you're making forward movement any forward movement is forward movement i think that's where people get tripped up a lot of times and they're like oh my steps aren't big enough it doesn't matter about the steps are you making are you further today than you were yesterday because what ends up happening is all those little tiny micro shifts that you're making are building your self-confidence and your self-esteem. And then when you start to feel like really accomplished and you're like, I am making forward movement, <laughs> then you start to make big shifts. Like I'll take, for example. Okay. So like when I wanted to start a podcast, okay. I did not know what I was doing. Like I had no idea how to do that. And I got very overwhelmed and I was just like, I, it's too much. I have to remind myself, you can one, teach yourself anything like YouTube university is great and Google. <laughs> okay. You have to micro micro break things down. I was like, what can I do right now that will help me do a podcast? And I said, I can watch a YouTube video. I can watch a YouTube video about different platforms that I could use. I could watch a video about communication. I could watch a video about interviewing people. I could watch a video about whatever. Like everything I do that's new, I watch a video about. Everything. Like I had no idea how to be an energy healer. I had no idea what the Akashic Records were. I had no idea what Reiki was. I had no idea what spirit guides were, soul contracts, or all these things that I do now. And it literally started with me watching videos. And what happens is the universe, like if that's, if that's what's bringing you joy and excitement in the moment, and you do little tiny inspired action things, your guides will show you the next steps. All they need you to do is make a little forward movement. They will literally show you how to do it. Like when I was learning about the Akashic Records, I, first of all, before that, like way before that, I just started watching videos about energy healing. My friends all of a sudden told me about the records. And I was like, ooh, what is that? Like intuitive ping. That's on my soul contract, like to be an Akashic Record reader. And when I heard her say the words Akashic Records, I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? And I started following that rabbit hole. And, and now we're here <laughs> doing like all types of energy healing things and owning a spiritual practice, a business. That was not my life 10 years ago. I micro shifted my way here, like confidence and self-esteem. I used to have the worst confidence and self-esteem, like and berate myself and talk down to myself and just like have, could not be alone with my thoughts. Miserable. I was so depressed and anxious and I had an eating disorder. Like my life was just spiraling, <laughs> like so fast out of control. I didn't wake up one day and just do the things I'm doing now. Like, I literally said, what can I do today, right now, that will get me a tiny bit forward, right? Like, very underrated. The tool that I said, the psychology tool, the wheel of life, 
like that is a very clear like step-by-step process of how to do this and when I tell people when you're building your wheel of life or you're micro breaking things down let's say that you're wanting to increase your finances put five things on a list that are one step things if you put things on your list that take 29 steps you're not going to do it you're going to get discouraged and you're going to put it off to forever land okay if you put on there i'm gonna watch a video about financial literacy or i'm gonna ask a friend what they know about stocks or i'm gonna go to the library and look at books like very one-step process things it gets you in that forward movement it's kind of like when you're cleaning your house if you don't want to clean your house like you're on the couch and you got your shoes off and you're like right if you set a timer on your phone for five minutes and then you start going what ends up happening is you keep going like you're like oh well, i'm already up and i'm already in it so we'll just keep going i have my porch in my home like had all this stuff that I hadn't gone through in a long time and I was like oh my gosh there's so much stuff like so much stuff and I put it off for like three years like three years (laughs) and I was like I'm just gonna clean it for 10 minutes like I'm gonna set a timer and do it for 10 minutes I end up cleaning for two hours two hours straight because I was already up I was already making the forward movement and then I felt like super great (laughs) like motivated and like determined big sense of accomplishment. That's what I mean by like micro shift your way to your new life. Like it seems like it's going to take a long time. It really doesn't. If you do one thing every day, a one step thing every day, one in each area, like you do career today, you do finances, you do romantic relationships, friends, and then you keep going around the circle, the whole wheel of your life starts turning together. And then the things get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and then you get more clarity. And then your guys start showing you bigger steps. And now all of a sudden you're in a different life. And I'm not saying that this is like overnight process, okay? (laughs) But it will get you a lot more forward movement than you looking at your life and saying like, I need to change everything and then getting so overwhelmed that nothing happens. Like that's been me in the past where I'm just like, "Eh." like it's too much work. So I'm just gonna be in this reality. (laughs) All right, and then be miserable. Ah, you got got to what can I do today? (laughs) Okay. Okay, accountability. Finding an accountability partner has been one of the most successful things I have ever done. So I have a friend, her name is Tracy, I love her. Uh, we tell each other what we're doing all the time. When I, when, when I talk about this, you need to find somebody who believes in you with their full heart. Like there are people that you tell your dreams and visions to and they're like, well, how are you gonna do this? How are you gonna do that? You should do this and you should do that. That's not who I'm talking about. Find you somebody that will say, I believe that you're going to do that. It doesn't matter how you do it. Like maybe they ask you questions, right, to get clarity and give you positive feedback or whatever type of feedback. But there's a difference in telling somebody a dream and a vision and then being like, well, how are you going to do that? And then there's another person (laughs) that says, I believe in you. What can I do to support you? I will be here for you. And I'm going to keep you accountable for that. You say you're going to do something, I'm going to check in with you. What are you doing on that? So, like, we'll say, like, what are you doing for your business today? What are you doing for your self-care today? What are you doing for your inner child today? Another thing, like, if you're a content creator or you're wanting to do webinars or seminars or whatever it is, right? I had so much social anxiety (laughs) and, like, lacking in confidence that I would set things up like classes, lives, and I would tell people about it. My fear of people's perceptions of me of not showing up was worse to me than my anxiety of doing the thing. 
Like, I'm the type of person that's like, if I tell somebody I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm not not going to show up. And the thing about showing up is that if you experience, like, self like issues with self-confidence and self-esteem, is that the only way that you grow through that is to put yourself through situations that you get growth from. So, like, I literally had to force myself to do it. <laughs> and the thing about it is, is you are going to be afraid before every single time. Like, I found this with myself and other people. Like, when I do lives, like, I've been doing them for a hot minute now. Or, like, readings with people or coaching or, like, whatever it is, right? Anything new. Like, going to a new yoga class, going to a new store, whatever. Like, you're going to be afraid. And it's going to be scary. Because your ego is trying to keep you safe and saying, like, hey, let's just do the things we've been doing in the past. Because we know how to do those. I feel nauseous. And, like, I'm going to throw up before I do anything. Like before I got on this live, before I did my workshop earlier, like even I know what I'm talking about. Like I went to school for psychology. I've been doing energy healing. Like I do, I've owned a business. Like I know these things. I know what I'm talking about. I still feel very nervous. But one day I woke up and I said, you know what? If I'm going to feel this way every single time, then I'm just going to do it. I'm literally just going to do it because it's never going to go away. And then I trained my brain and my subconscious. Hey, Carolina. I trained my brain and my subconscious to face that fear head on and say, like, we're just going to do it anyway. My ego, you have to take a passenger seat because I want to be my higher self. I want to be the biggest expansive version of myself possible. And that means you need to get in the passenger side. And I know you're scared, but I'm going to keep you safe and we're fine. And we're going to do this <laughs> because we all want to move up and evolve. You got to feel it and do it anyway. And, and you literally like get used to it. You literally get used to it. You're like, I feel like I'm going to throw up every time. Okay. Do I throw up now? Or maybe you do. <laughs> but like you literally do it. <laughs> you, you can envision moving your ego to passenger seat and now you're at the wheel of consciousness and you're saying like I am my higher self what would my higher self do in this situation what would they do what would they say what choice would they make right if you want to if you want to learn about your higher self and what that means <laughs> or how to connect with your higher self I just did a workshop on my patreon <laughs> and the replay is up there if anybody wants to watch it or join um so accountability keep yourself accountable <laughs> like you are the only one that's going to get you to do things like there is a type of satisfaction from like tracy my friend who keeps me accountable for things like i appreciate and love her so much but like me keeping myself accountable to things and then going through with them gives me more satisfaction than anything possibly could anyone's accolades like Anybody saying, like, hey, you're doing a great job. Like, I lived for that. I breathed for that for so long. Like, I was a, I'm a recovering people pleaser. And I would just, that's how I <laughs> filled my soul up. But it wasn't. It was empty. Because what I really wanted was my own filling my cup back up. And saying, like, Brittany, you're doing a great job. Brittany, you're awesome. Brittany, you're successful. Brittany, like, you're so great because you follow through with what you said you were going to do. Like, you have to be your own hype person. <laughs> like, keep, keep be your own accountability partner. But sometimes, like, when you're working through it, and, like, even now, like, sometimes I don't want to do things. I don't want to do it. Like, I don't, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> right? But I'm like, what would my higher self do in this situation? Or, like, people are expecting me to be there. People are expecting me to show up. So I'm going to do that for myself. Oh, hey. Uh, hey. <laughs> Maisie. I hope you're doing well. Uh, this is my friend in the comments, uh, the creative yogi, Maisie. She's amazing. Everybody should follow her. She's a great yogi. She's very wise and beautiful and kind and a great being. <laughs> she has, uh, hosts awesome classes as well, art classes, intuitive art classes. I think she has one coming up soon. Okay. So determination and sacrifices and motivation. So 
I'm not saying that you have to like make this your full time job, like self awareness. <laughs> okay, and like diving in deep into your shadow, because I've done that. I've been in that space where I'm like, I'm just gonna be in shadow land twenty four seven, and that's actually very harmful for you. Like healing can be toxic. Okay, but I will say that it is hard work to move your life into a different reality. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> okay. Like when a lot of my friends were going out and like doing their thing, I am working on my business and myself. Like I had to make sacrifices to get me to where I'm at right now. Like I watched hundreds and thousands of hours of psychology content and energy healing and confidence and self-esteem and mindset shifts. Like that was my free time. If you want to shift yourself into a whole new life and a whole new paradigm, you got to commit to yourself. Like I went so long with just like not, like frankly giving a shit about myself and my life showed it. And like I said, from like an outsider perspective, everything looked great. I was dying inside. Like literally way deep down into depression and anxiety. And it's because I, I would not commit to myself. And I woke up one day and I said, I'm the only one that's going to save me from this. I'm the only one. Because at the end of the day, you got you. Like, there's family and friends and all of those things. But at the end of the day, it's you and you. <laughs> okay, you and your higher self. <laughs> and I'm not saying there aren't, you know, people that support you. I've had so many people that have gotten me to where I'm at right now. Like, so many people <laughs> that I'm so appreciative and I love so much. But it took me showing up and, and finding those people by changing what was going on in here. Like, your outer reality is a reflection of your internal state. Like, I'm not saying that, like, all bad things that happen to you are your fault. Not saying that. Like, I went through a lot of trauma as a child, too. But it is your responsibility to be accountable to self and to change what you don't like. And you can. <laughs> okay. I was coming to the right moments. Empath energy coming through. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a great example. Thank you for popping in with that. So I am a very highly sensitive person, <laughs> like empath through and through, like, well, we don't have to get super into that. I was living in like victimization mode for a long time of like, why do people do this? Why do I keep attracting narcissists? Why do you know, whatever. And I was like, the world is happening like to me. And like, that's the reality I was living in. And then one day I woke up and I was like, oh, wait, like, I'm the creator of my reality. I can change anything about this that I want. I had to perspective shift. And when I did that, I found out, like, what impasse are. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's, that's what's been going on. And then I took responsibility for it and said, okay, well, then I need to learn how to do boundary shielding and clearing. And I made those sacrifices of like going out and doing things that other people were doing, right? Not saying that you can't go have fun, okay? But like I committed to myself and held myself accountable of like, okay, well, we know that there's a committed to myself and held myself accountable of like, okay, well, we know that there's a different reality that we can be living in. I'm going to do everything I can to shift myself over there. Does that mean that I have to watch hundreds of videos on being an empath? and learn about boundary shielding and clearing yeah it does and i did that <laughs> right and it wasn't always fun and it was like it was a lot <laughs> to do but like on the other side of that now like i am a empowered empath that knows how to handle my energy and now teach other people how to do it and i'm not saying you have to do this okay it's like maybe that's not your vibe to teach people <laughs> like that's fine but like whatever it is that you're wanting to shift in your life you got to be the one to do it and so I'll give you an example so 
do you feel do you ever feel like very or maybe people who are in here right now like very stuck and stagnant in your life like everything is like the same day like over and over and over again okay hey daphne <laughs> hey just everything is stuck and stagnant so what is happening is you are not bringing new energy into your life you've gotten into a groove where your subconscious is like you're seeing the same thing you're doing this you're seeing the same people you're having the same experiences you're not bringing in newness in freshness i heard someone say do our shadows that look caroline i'll get back to that in a second um you are not bringing in new frequencies your body gets used to it it's like autopilot you're on autopilot of your life that was me i was on autopilot i was just like everything's fine I'm just gonna keep doing this hanging out with the same people taking in the same content doing the same thing and then i wonder like why i'm miserable i saw this tiktok the other day and this lady was talking about um how when we get older we start to feel like very um all that stagnation and it's like because we're not doing new things when we're younger we're learning like we go on our first date we go on our first bike ride we go on our first roller coaster we go on like all these like new experiences and it makes us feel very youthful <laughs> right but when you get older you start getting in these grooves of life we're just doing the same 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 and then life gets very boring and it feels like walking through jello and like you start getting very like unsatisfied with the things in your life and so one of the things that i did to to get out of that funk was i did a 30-day challenge where i did something different every day it doesn't have to be some like big giant thing it can be brush your teeth with the other hands or eat out of a casserole dish for your cereal or move a piece of furniture in your house or take a different route to work or go in a new store that you've never been in before like though this is micro shifting it's literally not about the activity it is literally does not matter what it is it doesn't have to be something that costs money you can go to a new park in your town whatever if you do this one it's telling the universe like i like to be excited i like to have adventure i like to feel joyful and youthful and then your brain and your subconscious start looking for like that newness energy if you're in stagnation and stuckness that's what your body will bring you <laughs> like you'll just literally get more of that the universe works like an algorithm what you put out is what you get back and vice versa so if if you're doing the same thing every day that's what life is if you're doing new things and changing it up and mixing it up and then you're like getting excited and joyful and feeling youthful again right then like the universe starts to bring you even more and more of it and so i'll give you an example and this is it has to do with higher self and intuition as well so i was out shopping and i was like i don't have time to eat <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to go through a drive through and pick up some food and just eat that, right? And my higher self and intuition were like, hey, let's go to that restaurant, like on this little strip mall that I was on. And I was like, I don't have time for that. And they're like, you need to go. And I was like, you know what? I hear, I hear you. I'm going to go do that. I said, I'm going to take time for myself and I'm going to do something new and I'm going to do something fresh. I've never been here before. Let's go. And so I go to the restaurant and one the food was delicious <laughs> it was so good and then i ended up running into somebody that like i kind of knew but not like super well i ran into them and we had the most wonderful conversation like like very in-depth like spiritual type of like connection <laughs> okay and after i left i was like i was so thankful that i listened to my higher self and intuition and did something new because that brought me so much joy and so much happiness like literally for 30 days make a commitment to yourself to do something new every single day and if you can find an accountability partner to do it with that's what i did <laughs> and we checked in with each other and said what did you do today having somebody holding you accountable will get your butt in gear <laughs> okay and it also tells your subconscious like your subconscious likes jobs 
It likes to have something to do. And so if you tell your subconscious like, hey, we have to do something new today, it's going to look for things for you to do. It's going to shift your perceptual lenses and say, okay, well, we got to find something. <laughs> okay, that's how gratefulness journals work. I'm not going to get super in depth into that. Um, but like gratefulness journals, like when you start writing in a gratefulness journal, your subconscious like if, if you if you do it at the end of the day, that's the key. <laughs> okay, you don't have to, but that's a great way to do it. If you do your gratefulness journal at the end of the day, your subconscious will literally look for things to put in the list at the end of the day. It'll be like, oh, well, Brittany has to write a list at the end of the day. Let's find some things that she can be grateful for. And now all of a sudden you're raising your frequency. You're raising your vibration because you're like, I gotta find things to be grateful for. <laughs> Okay. And like it snowballs again, like these things snowball. And especially if you do them for like a 30 day period, three week period, like you can completely shift. Like when I started doing my gratefulness journal, I was in a very deep depression and anxiety hole, like very deep. Like I've had some real dark times. <laughs> okay. And when I, I thought that a gratefulness journal was like very silly I was like, I don't like the journal. I don't want to do that. How's that going to change my life? Like, that's dumb. And I said, you know what? I'm so unhappy that I'm going to do whatever I can to get out of here. I'll do it. And I made a 30-day commitment to myself to write in the end of the day what I was most grateful for every day. And at that time, I was like, I don't have anything to be grateful for. Like, I had my son who I love. But other than that, I was like, everything's shitty. So I was like, I'm going to write. I'm, gra I'm grateful I have arms. I'm grateful that I can breathe. I'm grateful that I woke up today. Like simple things, if that makes sense. Like I'm glad I have legs, I can walk. What ended up happening was my subconscious started looking for more things, okay? Then all of a sudden, the things that I was writing completely shifted. It was like, I'm so grateful that I am more confident. I'm so grateful that I had this great conversation with somebody. I'm so grateful that I got the courage to do this or that I did this and this and this and this. And like the things like evolved, like just in a 30 day period. And then all of a sudden at the end of the 30 days, I read everything back to myself and I was like, holy shit. Like I had a fucking fantastic, excuse my language. I had a fantastic month. Like, I'm so blessed. And that month completely shifted me into a new reality. Like, in 30 days. <laughs> like, I cannot stress enough, like, how quickly you can shift. And I'm not saying, like, your whole entire life will be different overnight. Like, sometimes it is a lot of work to get you there. But sometimes it's literally, like, perspective shifts. Like, a lot of times we're like, oh, we have all these 3D moving parts, right? If you think of it from, like, an energetic level, mindset shifts, perspective shifts, you can do, like, 10 years worth of work overnight. Like, literally. Like, that 30 days, I was out of anxiety and depression. And, like, I had been through some real deep, long states of anxiety and depression that, like, therapy couldn't touch. And just from, like, working on my frequency levels and my mindset shifts completely shifted me over. Where, and I'm not dogging on therapy. <laughs> like, therapy is great. We love psychologists and therapists. But when you start working on a energetic frequency level in tandem with that, it can completely change your life. So all of the things I'm talking about, like... It's not just one or the other. <laughs> like, and this is this is just from my experience and what I've lived through and gone through, but it's a little bit of everything. It's keeping yourself accountable, finding an accountability partner, micro-shifting, working on your mindset, working on self-love. Like, it's all these things that we hear, right? But we're like, oh, it's too much work. It's not too much work if you micro-break it down. <laughs> And you work a little bit at a time because those little bit at a time do push you forward monumentally. And like celebrating yourself, 
Like that's the biggest one. That was one of the biggest ones for me too was I am a, per- I, or I, I'm not going to say I am. <laughs> I was a perfectionist, like mega, mega, mega perfectionist. And let's say I had a list of 15 things that I needed to do during the day and I would only get two of them done. I would be like, you look at, look at you, like you're worthless. Like you can't even get what you need to on here. Like what's wrong with you? Like, and just talk to myself like horribly. That doesn't make anybody want to do anything. (laughs) Like that's, that's not giving us fuel to do the next thing. Like, that's very defeatist type of energy, okay? So when I switched and started, like, showing love to myself and saying, like, you are so awesome because you got two things done on this list. Like, I'm so proud of you. Like, good for you. We have all of these days ahead of us. We'll roll it over until next, until tomorrow, right? And I'm not talking about procrastinating, Okay. (laughs) Like that's different, (laughs) but this is like not coming from the energy of like, you, you can't do anything. Like you're not successful. If you celebrate yourself where you're at in life right now, and you say, I'm successful because I am me. I am successful because I am here and I am breathing. Everything I do is a success. Did I wake up this morning? I'm successful. Did I brush my teeth? I'm successful. Did I wash the dishes? I'm successful. When you switch your like perspective shift over to that, it gives you so much fuel and then you start doing more things because now you're coming from like, I love the sense of accomplishment. I love like how I speak to myself and that gives me the fuel to like do more stuff. If you're berating yourself, we're going to sit on the couch and not do anything. Because that's what we're used to. We're used to like hearing negativity, negativity, negativity. And maybe that's something that your parents did to you. Like some, a lot of this stuff is like trauma stuff that like has been learned, right? Or society has done <laughs> like programs. But you, you have to be your hype person. <laughs> Shift your perspective over every single I do. Everything I do is a success. And that might seem kind of silly. Like I just brush my teeth. No, it's not. Take just out of your languaging. We are throwing that away. Everything you do is amazing. Everything you do is great. When you come from that type of energy, you you soar. (laughs) Okay. Like there has been so many times where I had things on my list that I needed to do. Right. And I look at it now and I'm like, it's great that I got those two things done. Like, I'm a human being, and things come up during the day, and sometimes, like, I choose to do other things that, you know, weren't on my list, and that's totally okay. It's okay. I love myself. (laughs) And that gives me the fuel to do the thing the next day. But if I talk down to myself, those things aren't getting done tomorrow either, because now what I'm expecting is negativity from self. And, like, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Like, I have days where I have to check myself say like hey we we shouldn't be talking to ourselves like that or remember that's the old paradigms and realities that we're living in like we're living in like talking positively to ourselves right so full circle back around to the dark night of the soul (laughs) we were talking about the beginning those are ways that you can traverse it a little bit easier that I have found you're not going to be in that space forever understanding that the dark night of the soul and the void space and the hermit mode and all of those things power moments are a blessing. I know it's really rocky sometimes when you're in it. And like I got out of one myself just now. (laughs) Okay. And it was really rocky. And luckily I have, you know, like people. So that's, that's the other thing. You start supporting yourself. You find other people outside of you that support you on that same type of level. If you don't support yourself, you have people around you that don't either. Like, they're a reflection of you. When I started loving myself and, like, supporting myself, that's what's being mirrored outside of me. And so now the dark nights and the tower moments are a little easier to traverse because I, one, had to work through vulnerability (laughs) and telling people when I'm going through it. And they are here to remind me, like, hey, you're in the space. You're good. 
you're fine. Remember, like, this is normal. Like, you're, you're up leveling. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, I need, I need reminding, too. So you start supporting you, start loving you. It gets reflected outside of you. You find people. That's how you find your soul tribe. When you start, stop masking and you, and you be vulnerable with people, like, that's, that's how we're shifting our whole paradigm here. Like, I have, my life is completely different now. Like, completely different. And I still have facets of my life for the, that are the same as before, like my son, <laughs> obviously. And, like, the type of work I do, like, I've always been doing, like, self-help type of work. But everything else is completely different. Friends, family member relationships, co-parenting relationship, how I speak to myself, relationship with self. I have like all these spirit guide team members, <laughs> right? Uh, like everything is wildly different, but that's because I micro shifted my way there. And I trusted in myself. I trusted in myself even when I was like deep, deep, deep in shadow land. <laughs> I knew I would get myself up out of it. And you've done the same thing. Everybody in here who's watching this in the future, you have done the exact same thing. That's why you're here right now watching this. <laughs> like, you've done it before and you'll do it again. And, like, you got to trust yourself and trust in the universe. The universe is you. Like, I'm going to speak on that for just a second. Hey, Oriana. Hey. <laughs> I. This is kind of more of like an esoteric thing, but you are the universe and the universe is you. Your spirit guides are you. They're different. They're you in different flavors. <laughs> okay. Like you are the divine creator God of your reality. Like you're the main character. And like, this is not like saying other people aren't worthy or anything, but like everybody else is like side characters. And that works for everybody. Like, you you, you literally create everything, <laughs> okay? So, like, you can shift it. And sometimes we get so lost in the sauce of our own life, <laughs> like the 3D scape, that we forget that. And we think that, like, it's never going to happen for us. Like, it, it's a lot about mindset shifting and learning to love yourself, take care of yourself, support yourself. The better you take care of self, all of this starts to change around you. <laughs> like, all of it. Yeah, hashtag lost in the sauce. <laughs> but, like, you can literally change everything around you, but it starts with, like, self. Internal reflection outside. Like, everything in my life is different. But that's because I treat myself differently. And I talk to myself differently. And I take care of myself differently. And, like, I still get checked on that. Like, that happened in this last Dark Night of the Soul. My spirit gods are like, you haven't been taking care of yourself. We're not going to, you are not going to ascend to the new frequency consciousness level with how you're treating yourself right now. Like, I was overextending myself. I was entertaining some relationships that weren't equal energy exchanges. And, like, I thought the reality that I was living in was was great. And it was. It's, it's way beyond where I was at, like, 10 years ago, right? And this is where it gets a little tricky. <laughs> is sometimes you can be in, in realities that you think are the best one you can be in. And it's not. Like, there's so much more, like, capacity for expansiveness if you let go of like some of that other stuff <laughs> that you think is serving you, but it's not really serving you. Right. So sometimes we fool ourselves to keep our, it's our ego fooling us and being like, we're good right where we're at, <laughs> but you don't see on the other side, like where your higher self is like be proud, but don't attach hashtag stay in the flow. I love it. <laughs> yep. Don't attach. That's a huge one. Like not attaching to anything or realities because we never know what is on the other side and change is scary even if it's good change but it doesn't mean that it's not a million times better over there <laughs> okay and that's that's happened with me too as far as like jobs like I when when I 
sold my half of the business. I had been a, a business owner for like so, so long, like seven years. Right. And then I ended up working for people afterwards. And I was so angry at the universe. I was so angry. I was like, I'm an entrepreneur. Like I, I am going to work for myself. Why am I in these jobs that are not getting me towards where I want to be? Again, it was a perspective shift. It was like, oh, you know what? I keep reaching for a purpose outside of myself, right? And that's why, like, I'm miserable in all these places. One day, like, I woke up and I realized, like, oh, I am my purpose. Like, there's no purpose to get to. Like, I am my purpose. I am a healer. And I heal people everywhere I go. I don't have to necessarily be in that full time in the 3D scape. I heal people and I am my purpose. And when I did that, everything started to change. And I was collapsing timelines a lot faster because I wasn't reaching for something outside of myself. <laughs> and a lot of those jobs that I had in between then and what I do now, I needed to work on my skill sets. And I needed to work on my self-esteem and my confidence in order to do what I do now. That wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have been in those jobs. So, like, sometimes your soul contract doesn't make sense when you're living and breathing the experience. But when you're on the other side of it, you're like, oh. Like, I can look back now and be like, oh, I see why all of these things happened. <laughs> so I can get to where I'm at right now. And thank you, right? Okay. Drink this water. What time is it? Okay. Oh, dang. Okay. I've been talking for a hot minute. Okay. So <laughs> if you need some support, okay, with your Dark Knight of Salt, maybe this is your first time going through it. How far into a soul soul plan can you personally see? Uh, for a soul contract or soul plan, it depends on where you're at on your journey. Like the way the Akashic Records work and soul contracts is like your guides and like the keepers of the records and like your higher self are, are going to show me or show you what's going to get you to the next stage. Like when I do readings for people, sometimes it's past life stuff. Sometimes it's like, let's reach back 50 lifetimes ago <laughs> so I can show you something that's having a rollover effect into this one. Or... Maybe, like, you have some gifts from a past version that want to gift you in this one so that you can utilize it. Sometimes they're like, you need to clean your house. You need to do your taxes. You need to go clean out your car. <laughs> like, I've been reading records and soul contracts for a while now. And even when I go in to access mine, sometimes I can get, you know, like, 